Well, uh, people, what I'm going to do is give you the wrap-up before the video. So, um, I did drive around to all these loops. Okay, all the ones in yellow. And looked at where parking spots were. And when I finished, it was 18 minutes long. I, that's too long. So, this is a first-come, first-serve campground. So what I'm going to do is just tell you that the the better loop, what I found out was um, these up over here are all tents, tents only. Don't even bother unless you've got a tent. And then over in the middle section is where the, uh, let's see, that's called um, ute loop. That's where the full hookups and uh, campers are. There's some really cruddy little spots, but there's about 10 or 12 uh, full hookup sites you can reserve online. And then starting with these loops down here in yellow, and I'm hoping those are coming in. Um, going to tell you that I think the Apache loop, which is the last one on here, the, as you're coming in the campground, has really got a big variety of different campsites. Different lengths, shorter, they're fairly, uh, all of them are fairly even. You're not going to have to do a lot of blocking. So basically it's going to be drive through. Now the Apache Loop, like I said, I think that's probably the better one. Um, up the uh, Walpi Loop, right down here by the bathrooms. Uh, you can see we're parked right there and the bathroom is right down there. There's some big sites right down there when you first come in. Um, there's fifth wheels and class A's in there. So this accommodates all sizes of rigs. And don't worry about if you pull in and you're blocking the road, just unhook. You can pull your truck off usually to the side on any of these. So $15.59 a day is what it costs us here. Now we have the uh, senior pass, the annual senior pass. So if you're 65 and over, I'm not sure if it's still that age. Uh, it's a one, one-time fee, uh, good for the rest of our life, um, for getting in, uh, getting discounts on national parks and your entry into national parks that usually 30 bucks a car, 27 a car, whatever. Um, that goes away. Now we have a Colorado State Park Pass, which this is a Colorado State Park, and normally you'd have to pay like seven dollars a day fee coming in every day. So if we, we were here three nights, we'd have had to pay another twenty-one dollars. So we have a annual uh, state park pass for Colorado that um, has already paid for itself uh, within a year. And uh, that's the way to go if you can. Now there's a 14 day limit here, and I can see why, because um, we could easily just unhitch, go up there and dump, get some water and come back down again. And uh, boy, it's gorgeous here. It is really nice. So I'll put in a few clips. Um, let me pause a second for the wind. Well, the wind blew me completely away. I'm in a different spot now. The end of that video didn't take. So um, what I'm going to do is put in a few clips of driving through the campground. Um, some of the better ones. Uh, I'll try to make them short. And then uh, some clips of Mesa Verde National Park. Mesa Verde National Monument. Whatever. And... Uh, you can stick around towards the end of that and watch those if you'd like. So uh, we have obviously moved on from Mesa Verde and we're in another campground. So that review will come fairly quickly. And uh, I hope you guys get out there. This is a nice view too. And stay safe. We'll catch you on down the road. Be, clear to, uh, be sure to click show more. It's got an other information to recap real short for you too locations, etc. Alrighty, take care now guys. Bye. Here we are. We made it to Mesa Verde National Monument. 
Um, we're down in a valley here. This is more field dry camping in this area. Uh, they do have full hookup somewhere, but they were full when I checked online. So this, this is one of the circles. There's quite a few circles with many spots, but a lot of them are, are pretty small. So I'll go around and see if I can find some better ones for you. Uh, there was a loop right there. I didn't go down that one. Oh, yes, I did. Didn't really like uh, the level, and I pulled on around the corner here into, um, I think it's Apache Road, and found one right here. Now, why would I pick one right here, close to a bathroom and dumpster? That's because there's Wi-Fi right up there on top of that building. The further away you get, the worse it is, and there is no cell service down in here. So that's why I did it. We can, uh, the cell service is just going to be non-existent. Uh, most of these are back ends, like you see. Right here is a pull-through, but boy, I like this. We're down in a valley. We're completely surrounded by hills. A steep drive up, but very easy. 35 miles an hour all the way. Your your camper will do it. Um, if it was snowing, different story. So I just pulled off the side of the road here. When I backed in, I didn't have to level left or right. This is very level right here. All I had to do is just level right here in front with the uh, the, uh, blah, 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 the jack to get straight up and down. And uh, things are just starting to green up here in Colorado. So we'll take a look around the park and see what all's here. I think most of it's going to be the Mesa Verde uh, Museum and the uh, cliff dwellings, that kind of stuff. A little bit windy out there, so I came on into the men's bathroom. Yeah, we got us a one holer and faucet. You now there's no paper towels, so bring your bring your towel down with you. There is a light. Looks like hot and cold running water. Well, no, just cold water. One faucet running up there. All right, but there is a plug-in if you need to shave. Probably the same over in the women's and a push button door for easy a access. Nice and clean though. Hey, it's a state park. What can I say? Oh, camp showers. Now these showers are up at the uh, office, the check-in place. Um, looks like these are pay. So you gotta put a quarter in. I don't know how much. It doesn't say. Maybe there's a, a place elsewhere. So basically, you got you a shower. Looks like somebody made a mess in that one. So there we go. You do have showers up here. It says they're open 24 hours a day. Now this is the area where you pull in off the main, off the road up here. Campgrounds up that way. You pull in here to uh, register in the campground at the general store. There's a Knife Edge Cafe over there, but they don't appear to be open. It says Camp Store there as well. And then there's a coin laundry. Nice and big. Linda went in there just a minute ago and did her laundry. And then the, uh, the restrooms and showers are right here, which I showed you. And there's, uh, looks like 10 showers there. Well, I think there's more on the other side, too. And there is a campground uh, gas station up here. I wanted to show you the, uh, the map here. Uh, we came in over here is where the cafe and the laundry and the showers are. So when you come out of there, and you register in there, too, by the way. When you come out of there, you turn around and come back down this way. There's two dump stations dumping on both sides, so you can come in or go out. Now, at first turn Pueblo Road, it's all, uh, these are all tents only. 
Now I'll go up and drive this one, which is the Ute Loop. This is full hookups, small tent and campers. It was full when we tried to reserve it online. So then we came down here to Hopi Road, and uh, I think we drove up this way. I think this is was closed, but I drove up around that way. I didn't really see anything I liked, but it wasn't very full. And then uh, RVs and pop-up tents, I'm not sure what that's about, unless it's the whole area. Then we came on up. We are parked right here, uh, 335, uh, 365 is the spot. And there's a pull-out on the side like I showed you. And this road goes up, and then it exits out. Comes back around this way. So let me show you those. Um, now, we're on, like I said, we are on... Apache Road, so uh, there's that pull-through right there. There it must be a tent spot right up there. Yeah, for a slide, it wouldn't work too well. You'd have to put your slide out that way. That one's probably a tent site over there. So these you could back down in uh, on coming on up. Uh, ours is 365, so that may be like 363. Those numbers, they're non-reservable. Uh, they're basically first come, first serve. Or uh, I guess they'd tell you if they're full. Uh, that's Hopi Road over there. I'll drive up that and look for you. So here's 367. It's a back end. It's kind of like the one I'm in right now. And I've seen small campers backed in there. So we'll go on up the road there a little bit. Now here's one that's probably about 20 feet deep. Uh, if you put your... Um, the bumper over your stabilizers over those uh, parking pads then you could uh, probably easily fit in here this is wide enough to park your camper this is number 370 it's just on the other side of that lance I showed you when I was looking up the road now this spots a little short right here I was watching this guy back here he was trying to back his in uh, but that picnic tables a little in the way He's only probably got about an 18-footer. Uh, this guy came breezing through the other day a couple of times, and he just pulled off the road. He probably could have backed in right here on this one on the left. I'm still on Apache Road, so it, it's fair. I mean, you consider you want to back your tires up to those, those uh, concrete blocks. Um, not all that bad here. I wanted to show you, though, up here we've got some... Uh, got a fifth wheel in this one so this is at the top of the turnaround here on Apache Road so these are a little bit longer right here that's probably a 25 foot um, just a little spot right there for a short a shorter camper not bad right here on this one That could fit. I mean, you know, you're going to have to pull your truck out. But there is a bathroom up here. Okay, that's Hopi Road right there. I just took that right turn right over there just to see what it was like. So you're going to make a left when you come in. So I'm going to go right on up. I'm going to go up this route right here. This is a one way around here. I just went the wrong way. But I did notice there were some big rigs down here. A real long uh, fifth wheeler just on the other side of this. And then we've got a Class A in here. These on the right are pretty short. But, you know, this this is such a pretty area. If you can find one that'll, um, for your rig, if it's a little long, um, hopefully you can fit in. See, this guy's he's pretty good sized. He's in there. That avalanche got in. And there was a big fifth wheeler in this one the other day. He was parked not that way, but lengthwise. And there was another good size rig right here, parked right in here on this one, right in front of the bathrooms right there. There we are, right over there. So there's good little pullouts along the sides here. If you're about 20 feet, 22 feet, you can back into these. This premier is probably about 25 feet.
they get a little shorter on up the hill, especially on the left side. You've got more angles to it. So this is the uh, Hanno loop. And I think I saw, there wasn't very much over here on the left. So I'm going to go on up this way because uh, that looks like a good spot there uh, coming straight on up Apache Road. And uh, yeah, there's, there's some kind of big guys in here. There's an A-frame. <laughs> oh yeah, here, 322. Nice back in for a 20-footer or a little more. And then this side on the side here. That's not bad. Oh yeah. So these are reservable online, I'm sure. It's 149 on the left and 151. So these are these are definitely bigger rigs here on the left. The right side does have pull-ins, but they look like they're going to be small, small units. And I don't see any on water and electric on those. These on the left do have water, electric, and sewer. So there's some uh, there's some good sized rigs in here. Yeah, you see water, electric. I saw a sewer on one, unless he didn't bother hooking up. Yep, they've got water, electric, and sewer. I thought I'd come up here and show you what the amphitheater looks like. There's a lot of parking up here. And then the amphitheater is just right over here. Right over that way. I'm going to walk up there and just show you what it looks like. But boy, this is, uh, this is a pretty area. There's a huge, huge parking lot up here. And the amphitheater. Looks like that guy's going to take his bike on down. Must be a, a path down there. So this is uh, really nice with the background here. Looks like they are doing some repair. Repainting. And there's a projector. Very nice. This is uh, one of our first Mesa Verde cliff dwellings. This is Nordens Guild number 16, right over in the base. Oh, this is a gorgeous area. Man, we have seen so many canyons around here. This is a steep, steep drop off, so I am just right next to the post here. But how cool is that? I mean, is that neat or what? I hope that's coming in. Well, this is one of the first uh, homes that we came to, dug out of a earth pit here. If you want to read this, just pause it. Um, This is uh, really well preserved. You got your fire pit right here and the corner posts where they build the building and the antechamber for an entrance, the side chamber. And they've got these enclosed. So this one is a Pueblo here. So this is really kind of interesting, if you want to pause that and read it. Um, this one they've also covered up, and it's really interesting to read this because you go from the nomadic uh, to the uh, pit houses, which I was just looking at just previous to this, and then to the single-story villages like this one. And next we'll go over to a uh, to the longhouse. So uh, this was a natural development. And they cleaned this all out in here, excavated it, and did all of their archaeological searches. And it goes around in a nice covered area. Now this is the uh, a great kiva that they 
uncovered here. If you want to pause and uh, read this information, um, they just discovered it when they were cleaning out the ruins up above that I just showed you. And uh, you'll be able to see the, uh, the lining, the trash lining and ash over there. Really remarkable. One more of the uh, buildings here constructing a village. Now they're doing multi-story uh, villages. Um, in the ED 1100 era. So again, you can pause if you'd like to read this information. So they went from single wall uh, stone walls to double stone wall construction. And I think the single wall on the inside was another older one that was overlaid by the double stone. And then over in this area, are a couple of kivas, really neat. And this one has like a, a keyhole structure, which they say is uh, more of a Mesa Verde trait than others. Okay, let's see if this is any better. Awesome. And it is windy as heck up here. Holy mackerel. It's a little bit better view here of the uh, spruce tree house. Oh, some of those are really big. Goes on down the canyon here. You can walk down that canyon. This area has quite a few different um, structures here in homes, the mummies, and there's a, a uh, sun temple up there. It's another large group of homes over there, cliff dwellings, and then over here on this side, big area, two layered, two story. And of course, they did all their farming and all that up on the mesas. And primarily because it was a long way down there. You don't farm down there. Might have uh, done some hunting and water collecting down there. This is really pretty. This is the end of the... Uh, I'll put the name on it. <laughs>